welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Deer, sponsored by Grand Parade Outdoors. And John O'Brien, if you haven't looked John O'Brien up, he's a he's a teacher. He's a teacher about the soil and what you need to do to have the soil produce. And mm-hmm. so, yes, John sells a lot of seeds, sells tons of seed every single year, but he also teaches you why, how, and when to get involved with your food plots. So, folks, go to GrandpaRayOutdoors.com. And Grandpa Ray Outdoors does compensate me for mentioning them on my show. On today's show, we welcome Chris Savina. Chris Savina is an old friend, and he is the publisher of American Outdoor News. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, Bruce, thanks for having me again. So how long have you... Congratulations on your new podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm excited, and we already got traction, and I've already got sponsors, and so it's a lot different than the previous podcast that I had, which was uber successful, uh, a lot of work, and I know you know what it takes to launch something as you have with American Outdoor News, and and saying that, how long have you been in business with American Outdoor News? Well, American Outdoor News uh, really kind of happened by accident. Um, it happened, I, I'm just starting my, uh, third season. Uh, my spring issue will be out in March. Uh, so we have really, uh, two years under our belt. Wow. You've, you've grown because you just shared on Facebook live, uh, how many, um, people are, are, are viewing your, uh, quarterly, um, uh, journal, if you will, uh, and you told me a hundred thousand people per per release, close to it. Yeah, it um, goes out to um, my partners, uh, Dallas Safari Club, Safari Club International, and now the DC Project. Uh, send it out to their members quarterly, plus my subscribers. So we're reaching close to a hundred thousand people per per issue. So that's four hundred thousand a year, and that's not bad for two years in the business. A lot of hard work, perseverance, and uh, determination. You know, both you and I go to shows. I know you, um, along with my pal Kevin Paulson, went to Shot Show, and people come up to you. How do you do that? How did I want to do that? And you know, I'd really like to start something like that. What's your advice? What What are three things you would tell any listener that if they wanted to start something, what they got to be prepared to do? Well, uh, Bruce, like any other thing, you know, uh, if you're going to do a podcast, you're going to do a TV show, uh, whatever aspect of the business you're going to get in, you're going to write a blog, do your homework, man. It, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of blogs out there, a lot of podcasts out there, a lot of TV shows that just fall to the wayside. Um, do your homework. Uh, network, go to the shows, uh, ATA, go to... Uh, NWTF, go to uh, NRA, get out there, hit the ground, meet the people, speak to the manufacturers. Uh, without advertising and sponsorship, it's, you know, it's never going to work because, you know, everybody wants to be a, an outdoor star. And you know what? It's, there's so much competition out there. Uh, vying for the same audience what separates you what makes you different you know it's um you gotta you gotta work a new angle because it's been done yeah you uh for me for publication yeah i'm i'm the guy behind the scenes i i don't i'm not looking to be some outdoor star uh you know i'll do an interview but it's the real writers in the publication that make it uh, successful who are some of your writers? Uh, Bruce, I've been blessed. I've been very fortunate to have uh, people come up to me and uh, offer to send me an article. Larry Wyzoon, God bless his soul, uh, has been a great uh, mentor and friend. Uh, he sends uh, an article into me almost every issue. Uh, Craig Boddington has written for me. Uh, Brittany Boddington has written for me, who will be actually on my spring cover. Uh, Brittany Boddington, uh, Gus Kenjemi from Live the Wildlife TV uh, has been a great friend and a great contributor to the publication. Um, Jeff Fuller, uh, Sporting Dog Adventures, has written uh, has written quite a bit, uh, quite a few articles for me as well. 
Uh, so article wise, I've been fortunate. Uh, Ann Marlow, uh, Lorraine Lawrence, um, uh, Chef Derek St. Saint Re Romain is, um, uh, he's heading up my cooking section. Uh, so, you know, it, it, I've had amazing contributors um, uh, that have uh, really uh, made it successful. Uh, Shelby Bird uh, has his own blog as well. He's uh, been a friend and, and uh, helping me since um, seemehunt.com. And now he writes for the publication as well occasionally, and his articles have been top notch. Now, are these um, authors – or contributors, are they being paid or are they doing it for exposure for themselves? Uh, they do it for exposure. And, uh, you know, I've been I've been very fortunate as well where, uh, you know, if I had to pay Larry or, or Craig, you know, I, I can't afford to pay those guys. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I said, they've been they've been great friends and uh, they've sent me articles and. Uh, they've been great mentors and, and uh, confidants, and, and uh, they've given me a, a lot of direction. And uh, like I said, I've been, I've been very fortunate in the industry. Yeah, that's great to hear. And, and over and over again, since I've known Chris, um, is that relationship to relationship to relationship, plus he's invested in going to the shows, uh, the major shows where he's met these people. And uh, he's – you know, spoken to him, got to know him, and now they're investing in him because with a hundred thousand uh, distribution on one article, um, that's a lot of exposure for a writer, and somebody else will pick that up and see that, and plus it helps their numbers also. Say, hey, I was in a uh, in a uh, American Outdoor News, which is a circulation of a hundred thousand dollars per issue. So, it it all works hand in hand, but it takes time, and that's the thing. Uh, I've had people ask me the same question, and the biggest thing is you got to be patient, you got to develop relationships, and you gotta, it takes time. You just don't jump into this industry at the level that um, Chris and I are at um, overnight. It just doesn't happen. Even with people, manufacturers can do it with millions and millions of dollars, but the people uh, who are sharing content, it just takes time. I, I think of um, it'll come. It'll come to me, but it, it it takes guys and gals time, continually sharing good content, and um, well, Bruce, being there. I, I, you know, I, I formed uh, partnerships with people who own blogs and magazines and and um, websites where we share content, we share posts. You can't do it on your own. You know, you got to have relationships. You know, I'm good friends with Kevin Paulson from Hunting Life. And, you know, he just uh, did an interview with uh, Chris Peranto for me. He has a new uh, show coming out. Uh, so we, you know, interviewed him for this uh, coming publication. And, you know, but, you know, in turn, Kevin's going to use it on uh, Hunting Life as well. So, you know, the, the um, content gets circulated. It's content for him it's content for me uh and you know we share the um the subscribers you know why chase the same demographic when we could share it and and uh uh you know have that exposure you know he wants that audience i want that audience you want that audience why not share our subscribers instead of chasing our tail around the circle and, and not getting any 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 more exposure when we could share it we grow together just um, like we're doing right now. Sure. American Outdoor News. Here's the best part. It's free. How does that? How does that work? Well, you know, I obviously make the money through advertising, and I've been very fortunate to have uh, people like Track Optics and uh, Phone Scope and um, Negrini Cases. Um, uh, you know, just fantastic companies like Underwood Ammo or Choice Ammo uh, who have um, really said, okay, you're a growing publication. Uh, I asked them, do, if you're looking to grow with me, you know, at some point uh, it's going to be beneficial to you. It's going to be beneficial to me. 
you know, and, and, you know, I have companies that are looking to grow with growing publications. I've grown to the point where I have 100,000 eyes per quarter on my publication, um, and I've been fortunate with that. Uh, so I can offer it as a free publication to the masses because uh, the more people that see their ads, the more people that read my articles, uh, the better off uh, they're going to be. So, you know, it's it, it comes full circle. So now, if, if I want to, my if website, I wanna... go ahead. You can go to my website, AmericanOutdoorNews.com, and subscribe for free. You can access any of the publications, past or present. Uh, and, you know, you can read the articles. You can uh, click on the links directly to um, the manufacturers uh, that are in the ads. You can also see video. Uh, manufacturers have video in the ads. You want to see their product in action, uh, like Firebird targets. Great target. It's an exploding target. You can put them in um, uh, archery. You can. Uh, they're exploding archery targets. You can put them in uh, sporting clays and shoot them out of the air, and they explode. Uh, great, great product. Uh, and you know, to see it live, you know, that's a that's a, a classic example. You're seeing somebody doing uh, sporting clays, and you see the clays explode in the air. You see the visual because it's a it's a video embedded into their ad. Uh, I love that. Is I wonder if they make those um, babies. So if it's blue, it's it's a boy, and pink, it's a girl. I wonder if do they make those exploding targets. Uh, well, there's a little red um, uh, targets that you can. Uh, adhere to the sporting clay so you're not going to actually see that until you shoot the sporting clay and it's going to explode right right but i've seen guys i've seen videos of, of people shooting sporting clay shooting you know targets and they blow up and it, it's blue for boy and pink for girl it's kind of you know it, it I, I don't think they have that yet, but it's a good suggestion. I can, uh, <laughs> yeah. I can bring that up to them. Well, I've seen it. That's a sidebar, folks. So the other thing I, we're going to talk about, then we're going to get on to the Second Amendment um, in the next segment of uh, Let's Talk Deer, is um, you've got a new piece coming out. You get the, the fifth edition, I'll call it, Holiday uh, Gear Guide. What's that all about? Uh, our holiday gear guide, you know, we're a quarterly publication, so you'll see uh, four uh, publications per year. The holiday gear guide uh, comes out the end of October, so you'll have it uh, in your home the first week of November for the holidays. Uh, it's the only printed edition that I do, uh, and it's a magazine format. You'll see um, ads like you do in our publication. You'll see uh, write-ups about uh, different product, uh, so it will actually be sent out to 50,000 homes, uh, so you can have it in your hand and go through it uh, and shop for the holiday, but uh, it's also going to be digitized and emailed out to 50,000 more outdoorsmen. Uh, the digital side, there's going to be live links, just like my publication, so you can actually click on the manufacturer or the product and go right to the page and read more about it and see it in action. And uh, you could actually uh, order it online direct from the manufacturer. So it's a, it's a new, uh, new piece that we're doing this year. It's the holiday gear guide. Uh, I think it's going to do really well um, because let's face it, uh, outdoorsmen, we're junkies. <laughs> <laughs> we are gear junkies. We want to see the latest gear on the market. We want to no, see it's... how it works. And, <laughs> and you know, the, you don't know what to get your uh, uh, outdoorsman for the holidays? Buy some hunting gear. We're going to be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, between hunting and fishing gear, my wife just shakes her head. Yeah, we can never have enough. We always want uh, the new, what's new on the market. Uh, give us that little edge. and. Uh, there's always new stuff coming out, and you know, uh, I I have a whole room full of stuff that uh, I love to try out and test out and write about, and um, you know, I hope uh, all of our readers uh, enjoy that as well. Well, that's great. So um, we're going to switch it up, and um, Chris and I talked uh, 
in the in the warm up. Uh, we do have an election coming up, and yes, we are going to talk uh, about the election, but we're going to focus on the Second Amendment, which um, the President of the United States emphatically spoke at State of the Union that the Second Amendment is very important to him. There's a lot of people in this country that um, it isn't important, but history tells us that armed citizens are critical to our freedoms, period. And you can go all the way back to, you know, as far as you want to go back, and disarming the people uh, disarms the country and then puts somebody else in power, and you have no recourse. And just read your history books and Google it, and you'll find out. So, Chris, tell me about the Second Amendment portion of uh, American Outdoor News. Well, we have a two-way section in, in the publication, two-way Second Amendment. And um, it, it's very important, uh, especially in this day and age. You know, it's not often that we have uh, a president that's a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment like Donald Trump is. Uh, God bless his soul. And, uh, you know, the Second Amendment has been under attack for, for a long time now. And it, you just need to look, don't need to look any further than Virginia. They just tried to push through such sweeping legislation that would not only make it illegal to own an assault weapon, <clears throat> but the way it was written, it would be illegal to own a handgun, a hunting rifle, uh, a high capacity magazine. It would, the average law abiding citizen would have automatically become a criminal for owning a, a, a firearm. And thankfully, uh, it was voted down, but the reaction of the state of Virginia, uh, they became, I, I think it was 95% of the state had declared themselves Second Amendment sanctuary cities. And you've never seen that type of reaction before. And it was good to see the people push back and even saw people on the on the Democratic side vo step up and vote it down. So that's going to be part of the focus of um, this year's two-way section, uh, the sweeping legislation that they tried to push through. Now you're seeing something in Arizona that is not as radical, but still in Arizona, they're trying to push through some kind of legislation in New Jersey. Uh, they're making it difficult for people to obtain insurance if they're a firearm owner. Uh, and, you know, that's, that, that is going to become uh, backdoor registration, uh, firearm registration. Okay, you have insurance. Well, we know you have a firearm. And, you know, it's become more and more and more where they're trying to chip away at our Second Amendment right. Uh, and they're looking to take it away, high capacity magazines, or whatever it may be. They're trying every which way to maneuver to take away that right. And people don't understand how important the Second Amendment is. The Second Amendment protects every one of our rights. Now in Virginia, they're saying, well, we want to censor what people are saying about us, their, their legislators, their senators, their congressmen on social media. That's censorship. Don't they know that the Second Amendment protects that First Amendment right? It's so important that we're able to maintain that right. And you have to look no further than a history book. Look at Russia, Germany, China. They took away their right to bear arms. And then they took away their right to free speech. And then they took away their lives. There were millions, hundreds of millions of people exterminated uh, in these countries, in Russia, in Germany, in China. And they're not teaching this in school anymore. You know, they, they control the media, they control your, your right to bear arms, and then they take away your right to voice your opinion. History is repeating itself. We need to stand up, we need to fight for our rights. You know, people don't invade our country because behind every door there is a gun. 
You know, the largest army in the world is the American hunter. And no country comes even close to the amount of hunters there are in the world, the, in, our, in our country, that own firearms. And they won't dare come to our country and try and invade because it's not just our army or our, you know, our, our national security. It's, it's every citizen will stand up and fight. So it is so important. And, you know, you can say, well, these shootings, you know what? There was a time where kids used to bring their rifles to, to school because they were going hunting on the way home. Yep. There were no mass shootings. You know, it's it's the mass media perpetrating this. And, you know, you did this. Uh, <laughs> I did it. Yeah, the mass media. I, took, is, I got rabbits and squirrels on the way home. And guess what? We ate them. That was your dinner that night, right? That was the dinner. And trout fishing the same way. And, you know, uh, upland birds, rough grouse. So rough grouse, squirrels, and rabbits, and trout. Um, every once in a while, a bass. But that's what I did as a kid. Yeah, I'm more, That's I'm, more of, I'm more of a bow hunter than anything else, but, you know, it's part of our heritage. We got to protect our heritage. Our country was built on, you know, uh, being able to just go out and hunt for your dinner. You're seeing the hunting numbers diminish. Uh, and we need to, and that's actually the main premise of American Outdoor News. We want to... Uh, spur the interests of people, not just our youth, people to get back outdoors, whether you're hunting, fishing, kayaking, uh, just going for a hike. Uh, we want people to get back into the outdoors. I don't care what you're doing. Get outside. It's good for your youth. It's good for uh, our older people just to be outdoors. I got a video of uh, some friends up at my hunting club uh, yesterday, he took his friends up. He took his kids upstate to the club, and they're playing hockey on our lake. You know, they're getting outside. They're doing something. Then they go inside. They sit by the fire. They have a nice dinner. That's what it's all about. That's amazing. You've you've mentioned uh, a number of times we and they. Um, how would you define <laughs> we they? and they? Uh, those for and those against. It's it's very evident that the left wants to take take away our rights. Um, you know, they're there for big government, and that's not what our government was built on. You know, our government was founded on checks and balances, the voice of the people, we the people. It's it's there in you know in our constitution. We the people have the right to say and live our lives. In a free state, you know, you, you see all these uh, counties in Virginia and, and it's spreading throughout the country. Uh, sanctuary, Second Amendment, sanctuary cities. Why should we have a, a, a Second Amendment sanctuary city? By all rights and all definition, the United States of America is a Second Amendment sanctuary country. That's what we're founded on. That's all right. You know, why, why do we need to uh, reaffirm that? You know, we, yeah, I, I'm, I'm baffled. You know, if you want to own to a fight. gun, you know, if you want to own a gun, who am I to tell you you can't? If you're a hunter, who am I to say you can't? If you want to protect yourself, who am I to say you can't protect yourself? Well, you know better than I do. I mean, you know what, What's good for me? Well, I don't know what's good for you. Only you know what's good for you. Oh, but there are people that think they know what's good for me. Well, those people should look in the mirror because they don't know what's good for themselves. You know, you can vote your way into communism, but you're going to have to shoot your way out of it. And you know, that's I a great. Interviewed... That's a great. That's a great note because. Uh, you know, if you get on social media and 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 uh, read, you know, what's going on in our country today, a lot of people are bringing up history where people have 
spoken those exact words that you do vote your way into communists, but to get out of communists, you have to fight your way out. Literally well, die. You know Bruce, I interviewed uh, Gabby Franco. She's a, a, a competition shooter. Uh, she's from Venezuela. Socialist country, socialist Venezuela. And she will tell you straight out, you don't know what you're voting yourself into. She escaped from that. She got out of that and came here and said, oh, my God, I'm free to do what I want to do. I can go across the country and I don't have to check with anybody. I'm allowed to go in and buy a firearm as long as I pass a background check. And she travels. She's a competition shooter. She's uh shot in the Olympics. Uh, she's been around the world. She's been around uh, socialism and she's been around uh, a free state like the United States. You know, ask somebody like that who's speaking from experience and say, why would I want to be there? Why would I want to do that? You know, people, people are speaking out of ignorance. They don't do their homework. They don't look around and see what's really going on in the world. They don't travel. If you don't travel, how are you going to speak from experience when you see how other cultures are living? Yeah, I'm I'm a big proponent. I've traveled all over the world, uh, not as a hunter, as a, a as a tourist. I like to see parts of the world. I like to see other cultures. And um, I got to tell you, I've been to Venezuela myself, and you know, I walked out of um, McDonald's and some kid came. One and by, he grabbed the bag out of our hand and kept on going. Kid was hungry. He was, you know, that was his food for the day. Am I going to chase a kid down because he stole my McDonald's? Kid was hungry. I went right back in and bought another one. God bless him. He ate for today. Yeah. And people don't, I, I think the biggest thing, you know, two things that I think of is common ground. There is no common ground in, 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 our Congress of the United States of America, there used to be common ground. Yeah, we we disagreed, but then we agreed to disagree, and we took care of the country. We, it's been evident over the last months that there are people who could care less about representing you and I, and you and I elected them to represent us, and they don't really care because they know better than us. They They know what's good for me. Sorry, but really nobody knows what's good for me except me. That's patriotism, my thought. Patriotism is dying. You know, I, I see conservatives, Republicans, they're, they're patriotic. They love this country. But, you know, there's there's party loyalty and there's country loyalty. And it seems that the left's party loyalty overrides the country's patriotism. And, and that's very disconcerting. Uh, they're not even teaching American history in school anymore. You know, I, um, I speak to young people, including my son, and ask them about our country's um, history, events that shaped who we are today as, as a country, as Americans. And he knows nothing about it. And I have to sit down and explain history to him that they're not teaching him in school. And that's, that's damaging. Any other country, they, uh, from the day you enter school, they, they teach you about your country's heritage, how you came to be. They don't do that anymore. And that's, that's scary. We're fighting many, many battles on many, many fronts, but the core of it is for people to vote. And I'll be talking about this till November. <laughs> express your right. Express your right to vote because people died for that right to vote. And people stood up and said, no, we're going to go this way and it may cost my life and that's the way it is. But they died for that. And you have to remember that, that your one biggest thing you might do in your whole life is voting for the person that's going to run this country for the next four years. And nobody's perfect. 
I've had enough conversations with enough people to know that no one's perfect. Guess what? I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes, as we all have. But you move forward, and, and you have to build your belief structure to say, wait a minute. The country is bigger than I am. The country is worth fighting for and dying for. And that's a patriot. You either are a patriot or you're not. That's how I feel. Well, you know, everybody has the right to pick their candidate. But don't admonish me for why I'm voting for somebody. I'm not going to, you know, you have a right to choose who you want to vote for. And that's fine. You know, back who you want to back. But, you know, I voted for people who have lost. And you know what? You got to pull up your big boy panties and move forward and, uh, and, and, you know, accept what is. Whether you agree with that administration or not, it's still your president. It's still your administration. They're still there to represent you and, and protect uh, your rights. Uh, so, you know, this, uh, uh, what's going on in the current climate is scary. You know, you don't agree with who won and you're going to do anything in your power to try and take them out of office. Well, you know what? That's, that's not American. And that's, uh, that's very dangerous. You know, this whole impeachment process has been a force. Um, you know, and they're not done yet. They're going to keep, do, you know, trying to find a way to get this guy out of office, no matter what. And they're, they're skating on very dangerous ice because, you know, the people aren't going to sit back and say, oh, OK, well, you don't want him in. That's OK. It's not OK. We voted for this guy. That's who that's who we want there, whether you like it or not. Plain and simple. Uh, it's interesting times, but. You know, one thing I, I do know, it's winter time and people are out shed hunting and, and feeding their deer and taking care of their deer. And, and like you said, you get your hunt club and thank God we have places to go that we can just yeah. kind of decompress and, and just get back to nature. Um, and that a big part of your magazine is about that. It's about hunting and, and it's about people doing what they love and having the freedom do, to do that. And uh, Well, I'm on just... the board of um, Whitetail Hunting Club, my hunting club uh, up by Monticello. And, you know, we have 600 acres to hunt on. It's just stocked with bear and deer and coyote and bobcat and turkey. Uh, we have a 60-acre lake that is full of uh, pike and, and pickerel and bass. So, you know, my, my friends were up there this week ice fishing. And, uh, you know, it's a year-round uh, type of thing. There's something for us to do all year round if we want to go fishing in the spring or, you know, go scouting or shedding or just go on a hike. Hop on your ATV and go for a ride. We've got 600 acres to do it. It's beautiful. You know, it's, it's a great place for the kids to get outdoors. Uh, my son loves... Uh, hopping on the ATV and he'll disappear into the woods for hours with the other kids. And they just have a, a grand old time. It's amazing. Well, Chris, it's just been a pleasure to have uh, you on uh, Let's Talk Deer today, sponsored by Grandpa Ray Outdoors. And I wish you uh, the best of luck and can't wait till we touch base and uh, before hunting season uh, starts up. All right. Well, I appreciate you having me on. And uh, our spring issue will be out by March 10th. Uh, we got a great lineup this year. Uh, Brittany Boddington will be on the cover. Gus and Jemmy, Jim Zumbo, uh, Gus and Jemmy. Uh, yeah, Gus, Craig Boddington, Brittany, and Jim Zumbo. Those are my four covers this year. So um, keep an eye out for that. And uh, we're looking forward to another great year and hope uh, uh, everybody enjoys the publication. Thanks so much. This is a notice. From Bruce Hutchin, host of Let's Talk Deer. Let's Talk Deer receives compensation from Grandpa Ray Outdoors for podcast and Facebook Live and other other communication I utilize on social media.